Hi, greetings. The topic I will be talking about in the next 15 minutes is process mining. This is a data mining method focused on end-to-end -end processes. The focus will be on analyzing process-related data to unlock value. Let us look at uh, some of the definitions. <coughs> A process is a sequence of activities that we do to achieve a result. The scope of a process depends on where it starts and where it ends. Mining is a term used for extracting value from big data. Big data refers to a large population of data as against the small samples used in approaches such as Six Sigma. As discussed, Process mining is a variant of data mining focused on unlocking value from process data. Typically, process mining projects are, will handle end-to-end -end processes where work flows, work flows through computerized systems from start to end. Let us get a bit deeper into processes. Who is responsible for process? Practically, everybody uses a process. The scope can vary from person to person. All performance results come from processes. In the context of an organization, its performance comes from end-to-end -end processes. To this extent, someone with the overall responsibility for end-to-end -end process is the typical customer for a process mining project. Organization-wide initiatives such as ISO certification is about quality management process. The capability maturity model used in software industry is also about organization-wide process and there the maturity of an organization is measured by the maturity of its processes. Processes have limitations called process capability. We cannot improve results without looking into our process and improving their capability. How do we improve a process? Typically, the scope of a process limits the improvement. In the Six Sigma approach, often micro-level processes are addressed. End-to-end -end view makes process mining a more valuable method. Performance pertaining to processes are often related to increasing speed, reducing end-to-end -end cycle time, and reducing waste. When related to traditional approaches such as Six Sigma, these are the lean attributes or dimensions. Bottlenecks are the most frequent problem in an end-to-end -end process. In their anxiety to keep costs down, organizations often wait till they are forced to react to a situation. Proactive improvement ideas can result from an understanding of process capability and the ability to visualize current and potential future states. The ability to understand other variables associated with good or bad performance also enhances discovery of solutions. In terms of analysis, where is mining coming in? Won't some approach such as Six Sigma do? As we saw briefly, traditional data analysis is based on sample statistics. These are still useful, but they require homogeneous data from a single process. Big data usually contains elements of multiple processes. Different cases in a big data situation may have a different number of subprocess steps. Process mining may also require other data mining techniques such as decision trees, grouping methods based on association or cluster analysis, etc. Process flow charts often have decision boxes to route the process flow through different paths. Decision tree techniques can be used for improving such branching criteria. Now, is there a tool for doing this? How does this tool work or help? Obviously, since we are dealing with a huge volume of data, we need a tool. The process mining tools can be used for discovering as is process 
from log data residing in the computer system network. The minimum data requirements are case ID, activity name, and a timestamp. Without these, process mining is not possible at all. Other associated data, such as resources, etc., can help add significant value, but these three are a basic minimum. The discovered process enables understanding of the flow, deviations, and bottlenecks. One can also filter the data with different criteria and play around with the data to discover more in an interactive way. The greatest advantage of modern process mining tools is their ability to visualize the problem graphically. This makes it easy to communicate the situation to others and bring about greater clarity and conviction. Here are some typical applications to which process mining can be applied. The underlying theme is data in ERP systems such as SAP or Oracle, uh, customer relation management systems, product data management systems, electronic medical record systems, etc. can be used for analysis. Typically, the data would provide workflow that can be tracked digitally as in a process that flows across a computer network. The number of timestamps we have will limit the granularity at which process can be tracked and analyzed. Supply chain processes, customer interaction processes as in a call center, healthcare delivery process in a hospital, etc. are typical examples. Based on barcode data, even baggage handling by an airport or a parcel handling by a courier may be analyzed. Process mining uh, can answer several typical questions. What happened will be the first question. The discovery of ASI's process is a commentary on the current state of affairs. This will also highlight the bottlenecks form and the deviations that occurred. Why did this happen can be the next question. From an understanding of what happened and where exactly it happened, what time it happened, etc., we can much more easily understand why did it happen? Where was the largest amount of delay? What was the need to deviate? These kind of questions can always be uh, understood. Based on the understanding of the current process capability, we can always say what will happen tomorrow. If you have a set of process capability and you are going to grow, let's say at 20% per annum, we can always say, look, with this process capability, how will this uh, 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 process cope with a increased workflow? We can also answer what better can happen. The way you have been able to analyze and understand current bottleneck, etc., will tell you if you remove a bottleneck, what is the extent to which you know, the process can speed up. You must remember, however, that a bottleneck is always not going to you know, yield all its uh, uh, you know, disadvantage. The moment you go and remove one bottleneck, there may always be yet another bottleneck lurking just behind it, which can come to the surface, and that may become the new bottleneck. And hence, the differential time that you can save may not always be equivalent to what a current bottleneck itself is contributing. What can be the typical benefits? Process mining can be application domain agnostic. Whatever we are talking of is very general. So we can express the typical benefits also in more general terms. With process mining, we can get a deep insight into the process, leading to improvement of the process. Often these improvements are end-to-end -end in terms of cycle time, waiting time, waste stage, etc. By reducing unwanted rework loops and other non-valid activities, we can reduce the bottlenecks and free up resources. These can also bring down cost and increase the capacity. One can analyze resource requirements and interdepartmental dynamics also. One can also use process mining to investigate the state of conformance to key requirements by using it for internal audit 
thereby making external certification or accreditation lot smoother. What kind of projects can we take up? How do we explore the scope of process mining for a project? First, we have to we have to understand if there are any questions that we want answered. It is possible that you already have a hypothesis or hunch about what hurts the organization. Even otherwise, just as we do a master health checkup for a human, we can always do a diagnostic check on a process, end-to-end -end process, to see where does the organization stand from the process perspective. With the proliferation of computers, we may already be having a lot of data. We have some minimum prerequisites, uh, uh, prerequisite fields to apply such data for process mining. These are case ID, activity name, and timestamp. If we do not have this data, we cannot you know, uh, carry out a process mining project at all. We have no scope. We can also identify other data that we want to uh, you know, uh, use to get a deeper insight. We can start identifying the data that is necessary before, you know, so that the next time around we can uh, introduce process mining. The processing power and storage capacity of computers have become very low nowadays. Uh, it's already believed that you know, whether we like it or not, whether we want it or not, we must be having a lot of log data. However, it is still possible that you know certain key data may not be there, so we can start collecting this data. That's another dimension. The quantum of data that we should uh, have for a successful process mining project is also another interesting aspect. Typically, you should have, let's say, a typical cycle time in your end-to-end -end cycle time in your organization, uh, a typical one. That means it is not necessarily the maximum; it can be the uh, uh, you know median value uh, item. If that is of the order of uh, 10 days, you should have data collected over 200 days, 20 times that uh, typical time should be the volume of data. So the, in this way, you know, we have adequate number of replication of the data, adequate number of uh, variety, which uh, may uh, extend as much as four to five times the typical time. And you know, th that way we will be able to have adequate amount of uh, data for processing. The quantum of data, uh, uh, you know, residing in uh, ERP, CRM, PDM, etc. Those kind of systems uh, can always be uh, extracted. Uh, we can also get them from uh, maybe Excel spreadsheets, which individuals have in their uh, individual computer. Maybe it is not networked. Uh, that could also be pulled together to get the amount of data. Uh, well, I mean, the examination of what data is already available is a very crucial prerequisite to start a process mining project. That brings us to the end of my presentation on process mining. I'll be glad to answer any specific questions you may have. Uh, you may contact me at this email ID I have given here, saumyan.tirumurthi at gmail.com. Uh, my cell number is 96329-11650 and I'm based in Bangalore. Uh, thank you for listening.